Hey, I'm Carrie Murphy, and welcome back to Inspired Living TV, where we inspire lives and empower entrepreneurs. And I don't know about you, but have you ever felt like the odds are just stacked against you? That if something was going to happen, you had all of these challenges and adversity to go through to get to where you really want. Well, today I gotta tell you, I'm sitting down with a woman who has fought some serious odds in her life and is stronger and more brilliant than ever, Angie Everhart. Angie, thank you so much for being with me today. Hi. Actress, <laughs> model, you do a lot of work in the charity sector. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, flipping through that Sports Illustrated magazine, a little envious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you started modeling early on. You were 14 when you started. I was 14 when I started. You know, I did Sports Illustrated when they didn't when they didn't retouch. <laughs> so we really, looked like that. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing because nowadays that is definitely not the case. Um, but how did you get started modeling at such an early age? Well, my mom's. I have four older brothers, so my oh, wow. mom was like, "Uh oh, we got to get her into something." <laughs> and because I was a little bit of a tomboy and and a troublemaker, <laughs> so my I would like egg my brothers on. And, right. And With some brothers, I'm sure that's easy. It was. So <laughs> she was like, "You know, I got to get her do, into doing something." And she took my picture into a modeling agency, and they said, "Yes, bring her in." So you didn't really have an interest at the time. She was the one who kind of spearheaded you getting into modeling. Well, I didn't know what it was. Sure. I had no yeah. idea what modeling was. Yeah. At nine, and at the I time, wanted to be a supermodel so bad. So I'm like, you didn't know. That's just... Well, yeah. and at the I time, know. supermodels weren't supermodels. I mean, right. so it, Christy Turlington was just be, like... When I, when, I mean, I just met Christy Turlington. She was... She, I mean, I was staying with her at Eileen Ford's house. Wow. So, I mean, the girls were... She was a generation before me, yep. but and I was up and coming right on their tails, you know? Right. Well, speaking of Eileen Ford, you know, an icon in the industry, she actually said that redheads weren't fashionable. Redheads don't sell, she told me. Eileen Ford, I went, I was, I, so I went to Eileen Ford and I was in her house, I was staying in her house, and <laughs> I walked up to her bedroom and I put my hand on, on her doorway. She walked up to me and she smacked my hand off the doorway, and I was, I was so shocked by it. Sure. And I was like, oh. she said. And besides, redheads don't sell. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, my mom doesn't even hit, hit me. Right. And I was like, Eileen, you want to bet? And I took my stuff and I left, and I was proudly the first redhead on the cover of American Glamour, and I sold more covers than anyone ever. I mean, congratulations, and that's amazing. <laughs> and just again, define the odds. What wasn't typical, you know, it kind of fueled you, right, to say, well, watch me. Don't tell me that I can't do something. <laughs> Ooh, I like the feistiness. She's like a little fiery, I like it. Um, and, you know, working with so many entrepreneurs, Angie, you know, we talk about life kind of is a business, mm -hmm. and we all have adversity, we all have things that come up and challenge us, and we can either look at, you know, creating new opportunities for ourselves. Because at that time, too, right. like there had never been on a redhead on the cover of Glamour, right? And well, no, there hadn't. There's, there'd never been, pretty much, I was the only redhead in the business. Right. And, and how did you feel? Did you ever awesome. think, did you, but did you ever think, what am I doing here? Or can I make it? Or were you like, this is, this is great. I am a pioneer here. I just, I loved being different. I yeah. loved being the one that was the, the sole different one because yeah. all the girls were fighting with each other and then there was me. <laughs> See, different <laughs> is good. But I think, you know, a lot of people don't feel that way. They're different. They don't look like everyone else. And so well, they let feel me, like growing you know, they up, do Growing yeah. up, I got teased. I mean, I got teased. I got called every name in the book. I mean, you you get thick skin being a redhead. Yeah, yeah. I have a girlfriend who's a redhead, and I'm always amazed at the stories she tells me oh. and what they say. Oh, and it's, it's bad. I'm like, really? That's a real thing? The ginger thing and all of that? And Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. My brothers would get in big fights as growing up as a redhead. I mean, you can't even imagine the bad things that people would say to you as a redhead. Some of them were good, but a lot of them were bad. Right. And... And then when I became a teenager, when I started sprouting wings, so to say, <laughs> <laughs> the, comp the compliments started coming. Right, right. You're like, okay, this is better. This is better. So obviously you've done a lot of modeling, but you've moved on from there. You've been acting. You do a lot of spokesperson work. Mm -hmm. So uh, was, that, was that shift easy for you? 
Well, I was always doing that. So with modeling, it's modeling and, and being a spokesperson for companies. So it's the sa it's kind of the same thing. Like right. Right now, I'm a spokesperson for Oralgen for 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 because you said like you like my smile. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> smile. Yes. For a tooth whitening company. So it's it's a whitening a tooth whitener, which I you know I love it because it makes you smile. Yes, <laughs> yes, it makes you confident, right? And that's what we all want to feel. We want to feel confident and able to pursue what it is that we all have that desire to pursue. And, you know, life happens, things happen. So I definitely want to talk about some of the adversity you've gone through. But I also want to know, Angie, growing up in entertainment, how did that affect your body image? Was it always healthy? Did you ever feel like, you know, you weren't good enough or you had to be a certain size? Or was that just like, this is just naturally you? Well, my introduction in, at, in Paris was the very first dinner that I had. I went out to dinner with the, my agent and he said, let's go out to dinner and order whatever you want. So I ordered and I ordered a salad and I ordered a main course and the main course came and he took it away. Wow. And you know, we, we were three girls from Ohio. So we looked at each other. We were like, yeah, and he where's said, my food? <laughs> and he said, don't ever do that again. He said, you order one thing. Wow. And so we, learned real fast to order one good thing at the dinner table if we were going out with our agent. Right. And, Was it the fact that you, you don't eat two around things? your agent and you don't eat around anybody in in the fashion industry whatsoever. And well because you had to be really skinny. Yeah. And right. that, you know, I still when I look in the mirror, because you you know, I always see more weight sure. than what I am so well there's a bit it, of body dysmorphia you know when you are constantly being scrutinized for it, how you for look sure. and your size so for sure and, and I bring that up because I feel like when I work with people on on being seen and being heard they all it doesn't matter what you look like we all have that voice that says I'm too big I'm not this I mean hello I'm sitting down with Angie Everhart here and she's telling me that she sees more weight on herself and I just, but it's I, severe in the modeling it, industry. it is it is and <laughs> And yet, it's, I think all women deal with that to some degree. And in the entertainment and modeling industry, right. it's to like the, the, the umph degree. So I mean, it's, it's really serious in the yeah. entertainment industry. Yeah. Really well, serious. It's, it's who you are. <laughs> it's what they're selling, right? So, well, um, that's my business. I mean, I right. have to be thin. I have to look good. I have to. And when I'm, and, but you know what? I love being thin. I, I feel better when I'm And how do you keep thin. yourself healthy? Is, it, there's a, is there like something that you do or a certain diet that you stick with? Well, right now I actually feel better than I have in a long time. Yeah. Um, it's working out, but I have to work out now at my age. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, sister. <laughs> I have to work out. Yeah. And, and I, but I feel better. I feel better in my head. I feel better about everything when I work out. So, so let's talk about feeling the best that you felt because yes. there was, a f I'm assuming, quite a time in your life. Um, that you weren't feeling so great when you were diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Tell us a little bit about that and how you reacted to that. Well, let me tell you, um, there was a day that the Grim Reaper came knocking on my door. And <laughs> that's when I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Yeah. And it's just something you're never, ever prepared to hear. You have cancer. Right. You just never what? think, you're, you <laughs> never think you're going to hear that. Yeah. And when you do, <laughs> it's the worst day ever. Yeah, I can imagine. And so I, lo I allowed myself a pity party, and I had a young son, and I didn't want to lie to him about it. So uh, I didn't tell him right away, but I told him after. But I, you know, I, I'm actually, I'm not sure if I told him after or before. I can't actually remember. But... Uh, I know that I wrote down, I had a big pity party with my girlfriend on one night. Right. And my girlfriend came over and I was like, I'm going to allow myself one gigantic pity party. And I'm going to write down all the things that I want to tell Caden, just in case something goes right. wrong. And Which as a mom, I just like, that would be so hard, right? I well, mean, just, you just never know because yeah. they, we, they were so close to my brain. And, you sure. know, I mean, it's just so close. I didn't know. And, and it's scary. I mean, and you it's don't cancer. know. You yeah. hear cancer and you think you're going to die right. right then. Right. And but as it turns out, thyroid cancer is if I mean it is the 
it's the lottery of cancers, I guess. So it's, it's the one that is the slowest growing cancer. So if you, if you hear that you have thyroid cancer, and I mean, don't take this for, if you hear you get, can't have thyroid cancer, don't go to the doctor, but right, right. It, it's the slowest growing cancer. So they say it's the best cancer to get. Um, <laughs> if there's a good cancer to get, go with thyroid. If yes. there's a good cancer <laughs> yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, but let me tell you, it changed my life. It changed my perception of life. It changed the way I saw colors. It changed the way I look at my son. It changed mm -hmm. the way I saw everything. And things that weren't as important became important. And people came out of the woodwork that were very kind to me. And, and that changed me. Yeah. Because I didn't, I think I'm, I, you know, I was, I was getting jaded and I was getting, the business was making me hard mm -hmm. and, and it really gave me a, a, like a newfound love for people and I just wanted to pay it back. And when I started paying it back and started talking about it, because I was ashamed of myself, I was ashamed that I had cancer yeah. and I thought something was wrong with me and because I had to be perfect all the time. Right. You know, that I think that's an imprint a lot of people have is I have to be perfect. And if I get cancer or something happens, then something's wrong with me or I've done something wrong or it's Well, it also made me release that that mm. I don't have to be perfect all the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I'm wish a we got that sooner, right? I'm, I'm yeah. a person. Yeah. Right. I'm not a model. Right. You know, it's like I think that my mentality was so like inbred in me that then I, I let it go. I let go of all of that. So. so what would you tell someone, Angie? Maybe they don't have cancer, but maybe they're in that place of their life where, you know, they are hard and they kind of have taken for granted, you know, what they have. What would you tell that person? <sighs> Smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, life is, you get one shot and, you know, who knows? Maybe you get a couple, but... Yeah this is it. And, you know, for me, I just wanted to start smelling the flowers and I wanted to not miss out on anything else. I wanted to see my son grow up. I wanted to be there for every moment, but I wanted to be clear and I wanted to have to enjoy the moments instead of suffering through the moments. Right. And, and hurrying through the moments mm -hmm. or being on my phone through the moments. I wanted to look at the moments and enjoy them and feel them. Yeah. And Such a great reminder for all of and us. And because, because you may have a limited time, it makes you feel that you really want to experience them. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you've got all the time in the world, you take it for granted. Right, sure. When you feel like, uh-oh, I don't necessarily have all the time in the world, it, it's going to make me cry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It, yeah. um, it makes you feel like, ah, oh, you got me. It's good. That you really have to appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you know, out of every bad situation comes good. Sure. You know, that's a, it's a horrible saying, but, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Oh, I hate that saying. I know. But it's true. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cliche for a reason. It's true. So for someone who is at a place in their life where they feel like there's too much competition to pursue what it is that they want, what would you tell them? If you, if you have a great idea, then believe in yourself Yeah. and try because the, you know, the, it, if you try, at least you're going to try and fail. If you don't try, then you'll always wonder. Yeah. Then you failed already. Right. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you, get out there. Cause you're, I mean, for me, I get out and move and I have really since my, uh, you know, I've just gotten divorced and I really had to get out and move. Yeah. And, and that's kind of been my good coming out of the bad is that I'm really getting out and moving um, in a different way than, than I probably would have if I'd stayed married. Right. And that's, that's, I mean, just a hard thing to go through at any time in your life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yet, like we were just talking about, there is going to be something that's beneficial that comes from it. And um, Angie, I'm curious to know, what does, what does inspired living mean to you? Now that you've like gone through cancer, you're cancer-free, you're in this new chapter of your life. 
I'm inspired by business right now. I'm inspired by helping other people. I'm inspired by doing the business. The business that I'm doing is kind of all envelops and connecting the people that I know and helping heal the world. Mm. I want to help people not feel the way that I felt. And because right now I think our world is on the cusp of learning how to take care of ourselves, yeah. our bodies. And I think that there's big pharma that's been pressing everybody down to not feel good. Yeah. And I feel like stay medicated. <laughs> I feel like Yeah. I feel like we're as humans we're on the edge of feeling great. Yeah. In our older ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, you're doing something right because you look damn good. You know, um, I think that yeah. you know, so I want to, you know, and as we as we grow, we educate ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. As, as sure. you get older, you start to educate yourself. When you're in your 20s, you don't care. Right. You're just all about experiencing life, you know, and, and growing at that point. You know, your 30s, 40s, it all starts to change a little bit. Perspective changes. And, and I think educating people about taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you start younger. Right. It's not so hard, mm -hmm. right, as you get older. So that business, what does that look like for you? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, right now I'm helping these doctors get their FDA approval on an orphan drug for a cancer drug. Hmm. And it's a blue scorpion venom called Escazine. And it's, believe it or not, it's all natural. Sounds a little scary. <laughs> it sounds scary, but yeah. it's, 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 well, it's blue scorpion. It's yeah. little tiny baby blue scorpions. And they, they take the venom from the, from the blue scorpion, from the, from the scorpion. So they, they excite the scorpion. So I do it by hand. So imagine. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> imagine what one vial would be. So right. you, that's, a, that's a lot of scorpions. And they only get it in the Dominican Republic. And so we are now, and I help this doctor, we've raised money, we are in, we are in, we're in our first trial. So yeah. we're, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm very proud about the work that I'm doing with this blue scorpion venom because it's, it's actually helping patients for when they go through chemotherapy. It, it helps you not lose your hair. It helps you keep, retain your hunger. Because most of the time when people die of cancer, they die of hunger. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Because they, 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 they're malnutri yeah. malnourished yeah. because they just don't want to eat. And, and going through chemo, it just kills everything, kills all the cells. So this beautiful little all natural, it goes to the healthy cells and it doesn't go into any, it doesn't hurt any of your good cells. And it's, so was this part of your treatment process? It has been, yes. It has. I, ha I have my whole family, wow, not whole family. My dad's taking it right now. I'm putting my mom on it. So you don't have to be a, can a cancer patient to take the product, to take the You medicine. don't, it's a, it's, it helps for, to, it, for immune. Mm -hmm. It, it helps for a lot of different things, but it's fascinating. It's just, it's wonderful to be able to help people. So yeah. when I meet people that do have cancer, I, I offer it. Yeah. You know, I just say, look, try it, add it to your chemotherapy treatment. Right. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for still being such a bright light and inspiring people and helping people through a time that is probably like you went through very challenging. Um, before we wrap, Angie, what would you, what would you want to tell someone um, who is either dealing with cancer or has a family member that is being affected by cancer? Well, it takes a village to to deal with cancer. I mean, it's just it's the support is is really a must. Yeah, you know, and to have patience because it's an up and down. It's up and down. And good days and bad days. There, it's good days, bad days, and you never know when the good days are going to come. You never know when the bad days, and it could be years. Yeah. So just have patience. 
I think that is just a good lesson in all areas of life. So Angie, <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. If you want more inspiration, and I know you do, please head over to inspiredliving.tv and make sure to follow Angie. She is all over the place. Best place to connect with you is at Twitter. You can do Twitter, uh, Angie Ever at Angie Everhart, Angie Everhart one on on um, what's it called? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put all the links below, and um, so make sure to follow her journey and what she's about. And if there's anything we can do to support you, please leave a comment below, because when you are inspired and you reach out for help and you realize that you can touch someone else's life. That makes a huge difference, and that's how this life is going to change. This world's going to change. And it's escazine, and it's homeopathic. So okay. look it up online. You can buy it online. Perfect. And again, we'll, we'll make it's sure FDA it's in approved. the comments below. Beautiful. All right. Well, until next time, remember. And I don't get a dime. <laughs> <laughs> so. Until next time, remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. See you later. Bye.